Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an Eastern Kentucky group is offering support for domestic violence victims. And have you ever wanted to learn to fly? One school is offering an indirect way to soar the skies. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We are coming up on 5 a.m. on Friday, March 8th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, almost into the weekend. And unfortunately, there's another unsettled theme into the weekend. Check out the live view from outside our studios where it's in the mid 40s. And again, that unsettled theme with a 50 50 weekend is on tap next week, though. <laughs> Once you get to Sunday, you start looking ahead to the work week. Guess what? I don't think the prospects of the way the weather forecast will play out next week will diminish the fact that you're going, huh, it's the weekend. I don't want to go back to the work mode. It's looking good next week. It's, it, take it and put it in the money in the bank. Mid and upper 40s into the lower 50s temperature wise with a quick look right now. And the pinpoint Doppler radar again is in the clear air mode right now, picking up on all the particles in the atmosphere. You look back toward Lexington and Columbia as we change radar sources. You can see a scattering of showers from Lexington north toward Covington and across portions of central Kentucky toward 65. Eventually, this moisture will continue to track our way and we'll see scattered showers develop mid to late morning, continue into the afternoon. It's not a washout, it's more of a nuisance today and a forecast high in the mid 60s late this afternoon. Is tomorrow a washout? We'll let you know. First alert 70 forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. One Pike County group is trying to find resources and reduce domestic violence in the region. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the Coalition for Change. When it comes to domestic violence, health officials say the numbers don't lie. One in four women and one in seven men will experience a physical violence from an intimate partner in their lifetime. But they also worry the popular numbers for domestic violence helplines may not always work. So it concerned me that maybe uh, someone suffering from domestic violence would finally get up the courage to reach out to the national hotline or to chat and receive that message that their carrier service didn't provide the service uh, or no one answered that line. After the Allen officer shooting in 2022, which began with a domestic violence call in Floyd County, Pike County officials began focusing on developing resources for folks in domestic violence situations. There was much interest in uh, forming a domestic violence coalition. We feel as a group that there is a lot of uh, good that we can do. The Pike County Health Department is working with other partners like Turning Point Kentucky, local attorneys, advocacy groups, and more, cultivating a coalition for those in need. Because domestic violence is a complicated issue, uh, no one agency likely has all the answers. The Pike County Domestic Violence Coalition works to connect survivors with resources and provides a 24-7 helpline to make sure someone is always on the other end of the call. There are resources available and they don't need to wait until they're in a 911 emergency situation to reach out. Saying it is not too late and you are not alone. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The Turning Point Helpline for Domestic Violence can be reached by calling at 800-649-6605 or texting 606-792-2291. The coalition hosts quarterly meetings, which are open to the public. The next meeting is set for June 4th at the Pike County Health Department. The House State Government Committee in Frankfurt has given the green light to an amended version of House Bill 509. The revised bill mandates the use of agency designated emails for official business by individuals and public agencies prohibiting the use of private emails. 
Agencies in compliance will only need to produce electronic information from agency-owned devices or designated email accounts. The proposed legislation aims to streamline open record searches while excluding personal devices, a point of contention that promoted the removal of certain sections from the original bill. And I think we've got to have an environment where people can have a discussion, ask a question, say, hey, what time is the committee meeting uh, without everything uh, being laid bare and subject to a search. The committee passed the bill 12 to 4. It now heads to the full house for a vote. One school system in the mountains is introducing a new program that could boost our economy. Barberville Independent School is adding a new pathway that would certify students as drone pilots. Officials say the goal is to bring new opportunities to businesses in the mountains while making students more marketable right out of high school. There's because we know that the more opportunities our students have to explore and research and and kind of dig into what's out there after high school, the more likely they're going to feel empowered. Reeves adds the school currently has more than five pathways. They are always improving. The school says they already have students enrolled in the program and it will begin during next school year. Shenanigans Restaurant in Hazard is officially open in its new location on Main Street. The locally owned soup, salad and sandwich shop first opened in 2019. Owner Michelle Combs says they focus on not only creating delicious meals, but also supporting local farmers. And overall, Combs says she is excited to be back open again and bring back their pay it forward program. They're not just our customers. We know that their kids had a birthday or that their dog has been sick or, you know, that someone has passed away and, and that's, that's as meaningful as anything we can serve them. Combs is also inviting local artists to display or sell local artwork in the storefront. Shenanigans is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. When we return, we'll take a look at the upcoming Comic Con being held right here in the Commonwealth. And we start things off on a drying note this Friday morning, but there's more moisture lingering to the west and to the south. How does this play out as we head into and through the weekend? We'll let you know. The first alert seven day forecast is coming up right after the break.